Welcome to the final clue of our Rainy Days Mystery Quilt, clue number six. At the end of this video, you are going to see both of the versions I was working on, the pink version and my scrappy version with the border. You'll also see the bonus version that I haven't told you about yet, but it's the very first one I made using this pattern. I know you're anxious to get this finished, so it's time to cut. From the background fabric, cut three strips that are four and three fourths by the width of fabric. You will subcut these three strips into 20 squares, four and three fourths by four and three fourths. Each of the squares will be bisected twice, corner to corner, for a total of 80 triangles. From the dark accent, you need to cut six squares that measure two and a half inches by two and a half inches. From the sashing fabric, cut a strip that measures 14 and a half inches by the width of fabric. You will use this strip to cut rectangles that measure two and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. You need 25 rectangles. I'm demonstrating here with the fabric for my extra colorway. In order to get enough two and a half inch by 14 and a half inch rectangles, I did have to cut a couple strips that were two and a half inches wide to get them. When piecing the blocks, you want to use a healthy quarter inch seam allowance, not a scant one, a healthy one. The first order of business is to piece matching units from step three onto opposite sides of a unit from step five. I'm gonna take the units from the A bag and lay them out on the table and then match a unit from the B bag to them. So there's four of the A and one of the B. I'm going to put two of the A units with the B unit and then put the other two A units in a separate pile. I will match these up one at a time until I get down to about the last six to eight in the pile. Then I will lay those last six to eight out all on the table so I can properly mix up the fabrics and the colors. Now it's time to piece the A units onto opposite sides of the B unit using a healthy quarter inch seam allowance. You are going to make 20 of these center units. So how I organize this part is I put one of the A units on my lap and I sew the other A unit to the B unit. And I go through the whole pile keeping everything in order. Now they are all chain stitched together and once I've gone through the whole pile, I'm going to cut them apart and I'm just going to cut them apart and lay them on my lap in order as I'm cutting them apart. When I get back to that first piece that I sewed, all I do is flip over the A pile that was in my lap and then the top one should be the first one I need to sew on and they should all be in order. Now that that's done, it's time to take the remaining pieces from the A pile and piece a background triangle to opposite sides of the unit. You wanna line up the corner of the triangle with the corner of the rectangle and you don't wanna 
pay any attention to where the points are landing. Just line that corner up. Once you're done with this side, you need to cut them apart and then work on the other side. If you've been enjoying our mystery series, we hope you'll hit that like button and subscribe so you can see all the fun projects we have in store for the future. Before we head over to the ironing board, let's sew our sashing units together. Piece six sets of four sashing units from clue four plus one accent square. Use a quarter inch seam allowance. I first start out by sewing sets of two and I sew them all together because we have an even number so you can sew through the whole pile. And then I sew the sets of two into a set of four and adding the accent square to the end that doesn't have one. You will end up with six sets of four sashing units and the unit should measure two and a half inches by 66 and one half inches. Before pressing the units that you added the triangles to, you wanna clip the excess fabric. Then you wanna to press toward the triangles. For the center of the block, we are going to press these units towards the center. I find it easier to press towards the middle for this part from the back side of the unit. When you work on two colorways, that means you have twice the amount of pressing to do, but I'm keeping at it and I've got my blue and brown colorway and it is looking fantastic. For the sashing rows, you want to press towards the rectangles. For my primary colorway, I kind of did them in groups of two, but for my secondary colorway, I figured out an easier way to do it. I lined them up across the ironing board all at the same time and then all I had to do was pull and line them up so that I could do all these seams at once. I 
I sew on the side triangles, I match them up to make sure I have the right pieces being sewn on to the centers. Make sure you're using your healthy quarter inch seam allowance for this part. If you've pressed it properly, the seam should nest together nicely and be easy to sew. While I'm sewing one of the triangles to the side of the unit, I'm putting the other triangle in the lap so that I can keep them in order. And then when I pull them back through the machine, cutting them off from each other, I can just keep that pile in line flip that triangle pile over and then start sewing again. I like to stay organized while I'm sewing so that I don't waste time trying to match things up. Everything is organized, in order, all I have to do is sew. Well, that's one colorway sewn and ready to go. I have to work on my blue and brown version too. Take some time to trim off the little excess triangles. I found it easiest at my sewing machine. I clipped the one side, spun the block around, and clipped the other side. Now it's time to press. I'm going to press away from the center unit. Now that the blocks are pressed, it's time to trim them. They need to be trimmed to 14 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. I'm using a 16 and a half inch ruler to trim mine blocks down to 14 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. All you do is trim two sides and then flip the block around to trim the other two sides. If you don't have a large enough square ruler, you can use a regular ruler to get one side or two sides square and then use a smaller ruler in combined with your large long ruler to cut the right size. Once your blocks are all trimmed to 14 and a half inches square, you're going to piece sashing rectangles between four of the blocks and on each end. Make five of these units. This unit should measure 14 and a half inches by 66 and a half inches. Once you have all the sashing rectangles sewn with the blocks, you're going to press towards the sashing rectangle.
Now it's time to lay out your rows and decide how you want them to be sewn together. Once I've figured out the order in which I want the rows, I mark them with safety pins. The first row has one, the second row has two, third row has three, fourth row has four, fifth row has five, and they are always on the left side. Piece the sashing rows in between the black rows and on each end. When you have all the rows sewn together, you are going to press towards the sashing row. I make sure to remove the pins as I'm pressing so that when I get to the quilting stage, they're not still in there. Now is the time to add the optional border. I've decided I am not going to add a border to this one. I want to quilt it and bind it. Yes, it's the dreaded words, quilt as desired and bind. For this version, I decided to quilt it in kind of a large loop pattern. And for my blue and brown version, I've decided just a meander or a stipple is gonna be the key to making that one look good. For the pink version, I chose a gray binding. I'm going to put it on the front side of the quilt wrap it around to the back, and then from the front, I will top stitch the binding in place. I realized that for me, if I had to hand do the binding on the back for every quilt, they were just never gonna get done. So I learned how to do the machine method and it's been smooth sailing ever since. For my blue and brown version, I used a minky for the back, a 90 inch minky, so I didn't have to do any piecing for the backing. And I put the binding on the back, wrapped it around to the front, and then top stitch it from the front side. When I'm using this method, I make sure that I sew very close to the edge on the front with a matching thread and it's hardly noticeable at all. Okay. Hi quilters, the mystery is done and it's time for you to see my finished quilts. The first one is the primary colorway that I did, the pink version, and I'm very excited about how it turned out, I love it the pink and gray and I like how it makes the little boxes look like diamonds. I just love this one. 
very, very happy with how it turned out. I decided not to add borders to this one because I just kind of wanted a lap size one for this. It's even bigger than a lap size, but it turned out great. I still have threads all over it, but I will clean those up later with my handy dandy roller. So that's the pink version. Now the other version that I did was the blue and green version. And this one, I put Minky on the back, so it's gonna be really soft, nice and heavy. And here is that one. The border really makes it a nice size. This would be great on a bed. And I love the difference in how dramatic this one is compared to the pink one. This one, the blocks really just stand out. So very happy. And this fabric that's on the border is one that I've had since 1996. So I'm very happy to have used it and made a great quilt out of it. So that's that one. And the bonus one, you didn't know, but I had tested this pattern before we put it out. And so that version is this one here. And this one I made completely from scraps. And this one doesn't have a border either, but this was all just scraps I did um, in from my scrap pile. And the one thing I did on this one that I didn't do on the newest versions is I made sure that all of these four and a half inch rectangles were the same in each of the blocks. And that's a fun look, but I wanted my other ones to be a little bit more scrappy and um, try something different with this version. So hope you enjoyed seeing all the quilts and liked the mystery. We'll see you next time. A downloadable version of this pattern may be found in the files section of our Facebook group called The Quilted Forest Friends. Or you may screenshot it here and print it at home. Or you can push pause and take notes. We invite you to hit that like button, share with your quilting friends, leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe so you can see all the fun videos we will post in the future. Thanks for watching and happy quilting!